Hello, I'm Mandy Borsko with part two of painting the portrait in grisaille. This grisaille is going to be painted over the course of two days. The first day is about the block in, the overall map, and basically the first painting. We've let the painting dry a few days, and now it's time to move on to the finer details. I'm using Opus Essential oil colors for the black and for the white, and Gamblin Portland grays for the midtones. The first step is to reassess the painting for major shape corrections. I've noticed that there is something not quite right about the forehead, and I'm going to check it with a couple of knitting needles. I'm checking the angles. This is the angle on the copy that I'm using, and this is the angle on my painting. So these two needles need to be parallel to each other. So apart from this angle not quite being right, there's also the major change of direction, which needs to be higher. A second correction that I've noticed is that the neck appears to be too thick. So if I measure from the tip of his nose to the back of his neck, and then transfer that over, I can see that in fact, I'm about two millimeters too wide. To make those corrections, I'm going to be using a Princeton six and four, and we'll start with the background. You'll notice that I'm standing back every now and again, which is an essential part of this kind of painting. I am comparing the master copy with the painting that I'm doing and seeing what differences there are. I'm now moving into variations of the dark and I'll start down here with separating out the chin from the neck and the color. With the variations of the dark, right now, my shadows are quite light. I haven't put the darkest dark of the shadow, nor have I put any reflected light in. So the first step is to separate out this chin from the neck. I'm using a mix of Opus Black and Gamblin Deep to make up the background color. That helps me fix the outside shape of the form. I'm using a wide range of brushes and organizing them in sequence so that each one brush corresponds to one value. I'm refining these little shapes in here, matching my shape of the bridge of the nose to this shape over here, and also matching the value. The original shadow values I had put down represent the lightest of the shadows. Anything I'm putting down now appears to be fairly dark, and the trick is to make it all work together and all flow together. Because I'm painting a very small area, and I want it to be fairly accurate, I'm using a mild stick to steady my hand. I'm also switching to smaller size brushes to get smaller strokes around the eye and eyelids. Right now, the variations are looking quite hard edged. We can deal with the edges as we're painting or at the end of the whole process, which is what I'll be doing. There are variations in this cast shadow coming off the earlobe. I'm going to paint it first as one flat value and then adjust it so that the flat value I'm painting in acts like a couch into which variations are painted wet into wet. Painting is like doing a crossword puzzle. The more of the clues you already have down, the more you're able to guess or to accurately assess what the next words are gonna be. Now that I've finished the variations of the darks, I'm going to turn my attention to the rendering of the lights. Thus far, I've been using these values for the variations of the darks. Now, in the lights, we're going to be focusing our attention on these values here. I've cleaned off all my brushes that I've used for the variations of the darks, and starting with a four and a six. When I'm painting an area, I'm thinking first about the big form. So establishing the whole plane, the side plane under the cheek of this portrait. I've placed brush strokes of different values, but in such small increments that we don't actually need any blending to occur. We can have a beautifully rendered painting, which consists of a mosaic of little brush strokes that are set in a logical order. We have to remember to only blend the edges. In the darker lights, all the major values in their right place, 
but I haven't transitioned them adequately. So transitioning them means using a much smaller brush. It means using smaller intervals of value shifts. Painting, it's often a question of overpainting what we need in terms of, say, something dark, and then correcting that shape with the next value that we put down. Now that I've finished painting the darkest of my lights, I'm going to move to the highest register, our number one value, the lightest of the lights, and then work from light down to dark. Make very small value increments, and as we move down to the top of the cheekbone, this is the light that we had in before, it might need to be integrated with going around the corner of that zygomatic arch. But first we're going to patch in the lightest of our lights. As always, I'm working with the largest form first, bearing in mind that any variations, hair variations for example, we can get in later. We're moving into the final stage of the push and pull, refining, reassessing, correcting, and dealing with our edges. I'm looking at my master copy and correcting the really small forms and small changes of direction that I see. You will need to blend and knit together all of your brush strokes. Sometimes this is possible through working with two brushes of adjacent values. If any edges are too hard, soften them. There should be a variety of hard edges, soft edges and lost edges. It's only when you look at each one area and intend to bring it to a complete finish that it really starts to take on the look of the original painting or the look of your model. During this video, you've seen me take the steps and techniques that we need to complete a portrait in grisaille. This is a great launching point for artists who've been working in pencil to work in oils. I'm Mandy Borsko with Opus Art Supplies. Thanks for watching.